There we go, looking much better. Oh, all this base maintenance is thirsty work. Hey, what's this? Jeb Drinks Co. New refreshing range. Try today. Oh, well, I won't say no. Mmm, that looks interesting. Not sure about the colour though. Okay, let's give this a swirl. Ah, uh, that hit the spot. How do they get it to taste like that? Oh hey, I think this is where they make them. Jeb Brothers Drinks Co. Founded September 29, 2011. That's when Beta 1.9 pre-release 2 came out. Closed due to unforeseen circumstances. Hmm. Hazardous area. Health department. Hazardous waste detected. Do not enter. Hygiene inspection rating zero. Uh, I'm going in anyway. I want to find out how they make this stuff. What do we got here? Sugar. Yeah, okay, well, that seems reasonable. Nether wart. Hmm. Maybe that's the secret ingredient that gives it that kick. Concentrated magma cube? Ugh! Ground up blaze? What is this horror show? Ghast tears? Oh, this is the first time I've ever felt sorry for a ghast. Fermented spider eyes? Oh, this is disgusting! Oh, look at this! Oh, well, I think I'm gonna be sick. Welcome back everybody to Minecraft The Journey with me, Bugman CX. Uh, yeah, I've just been out here doing a bit of hunting because in beta 1.9 pre-release, the version we're currently running, it's possible to stack up to 64 ender pearls. So I'm out here in the desert, fearing for my life, trying to get as many as I can. Let's go back to the base and uh, oh, oh, um, put all of these together. Ah! I'll tell you what, it can be really difficult keeping track of all of the weird stuff that we encounter while we're exploring these old beta versions. So here in the ravine base I've made this little area here where we can store some weird stuff that we've collected over the last few episodes while exploring Minecraft beta. So here we've got a place for the overstacked ender pearls. Let's just open that up, put four ender pearls in here, and here we have a stack of 64 ender pearls. Now that should remain like that forever and ever now. It's just that you can't get stacks of 64 in future versions, and this is the last version where you can do so. So I thought it was a good idea to put them in here. We've also got our negatively stacked golden apple and some negatively stacked coal and some extra spaces for some extra stuff as well. Now we've done about all we can in Minecraft Beta 1.9 pre-release, and it's time to move up to Beta 1.9 pre-release too. But before we do, I've been doing work, as you know, on improving and tidying up the base, and I've got a little bit more to do before we get there. Hey, what's all this? New stuff? All right, priorities. We'll do our upgrade first, then we'll do a bit of tidying up around the place, then I'll go and check all of that out. Oh, it's been a little while since we've done that, hasn't it? Feels good though, upgrading, always making forward progress. But what is that weird thing in the bottom right hand corner of my screen? It looks like my XP bar has somehow become duplicated. That's pretty strange. In the previous version, you used to be able to jump and you would get XP, but that no longer works. So let's go and kill some of these skeletons and see what happens because I hope I don't have a double XP bar for the entire duration of this version. Um, kill, kill! Okay, it's gone. All right, just a temporary glitch. Not unusual in these beta versions. Let's talk plans for Minecraft Beta 1.9 pre-release 2. This is a fairly unique version, even for this strange era of the game. This version introduces the new potion brewing mechanics into the game for the first time. Although it also kind of doesn't. 
You see, the original plan for potion brewing was that you were going to use cauldrons to mix up all your ingredients and then create your potions that way. And all of the code for that exists within the game, but it's completely inaccessible in the vanilla version. And the reason for that is because you require a cauldron to brew your potions. But although the cauldron exists in the game technically, it doesn't have a block ID number, so there's no way to access it in vanilla Minecraft. So what we're going to do to get around that and explore this game mechanic is use a mod. And the mod is going to give an ID number to the cauldron, and that should unlock all of the rest of the potion brewing code within the game. Because in the next version, pre-release 3, the entire potion brewing system is entirely overhauled. So this is really our only opportunity to explore Jeb's original idea behind potion brewing. We're now running the cauldron mod by Ogre Sean, and I've added a link to how to get that down in the description below. Last time I was here, there were some cauldrons right here in the middle, brewing up some rather disgusting looking potions, but they seem to have gone now. Maybe the health department has started removing some of the hazardous material, who knows. But this mod does give us the ability to craft a cauldron, so I'm going to find a little, ah, uh, there we go, a crafting table. And if I take some stone, I can craft a cauldron like this. Now, of course, this isn't necessarily the original crafting recipe for a cauldron and certainly not the texture, but this has just been added by way of this mod to make it easy to access the cauldron. So let's just craft up quite a few of these using this stone that we have. Eight, eight ought to do it. And I'm gonna place some down. Now I can't place them on top of the fire. So let's just place some supporting blocks so I've got something to place them against and have a look at this new cauldron. Wow, doesn't that look cool? Oh, there's some fire getting through it as well. All right, let's place the other two. Oh, uh, let's place the other two down right here and here and get rid of these dirty blocks on the outside. Now we've got to figure out how to use this thing. Okay, so it's a cauldron. You need to fill it up with water. Ah, we have some water up here. There's some water in the corners as well. And lucky me, I've got a couple of buckets. All right, grab some water from down here and let's fill up a cauldron. No sound effects or anything. That is some bright blue water. All right, okay, well, let's fill up the rest of them and see what we need to do to start brewing up a potion. Once the cauldrons are full of water, we can't actually scoop it out again with our bucket, which is interesting, but we can extract the liquids from these cauldrons using bottles. So if I head over here to this crafting table and use glass, I should be able to craft up a bunch of glass bottles. That's more than I'll ever need, I think. And if I take one of these in my inventory, I'm thinking if I right click on the cauldron, yep, look at that. It's lowered its liquid layer by about a third and then again and again. And right now we have three mundane potions. So these aren't even water bottles. These are actually mundane potions. So I'm gonna have to find somewhere to store all of these because I think that this is gonna get interesting. I've created this little storage space right by the vending machine and what I think I'm going to do is use the chest to show us how to craft each of the potions that we've discovered. For example, we know that a water bucket will give us this mundane potion. And what's interesting about potions in this version as well is that they stack. And I don't know when that'll change, but in the future I know that potions cannot stack. So that's another interesting thing. Now with this mundane potion, it says no effects. So I presume that for all of the potions we create, it'll tell us what they do. But I wanna drink this potion and find out what it does for myself. Okay, ready for this? Let's go. Ah, well, nothing. No effects. That's exactly what it said it would do. Let's brew up some more of these and get a little collection going. Next item on the list is sugar. And um, unfortunately the chest is empty, but I can see some growing over here because we can just easily turn this sugar cane into sugar. All right, so now how do we put the sugar into the cauldron? I don't think that putting it on top is going to do anything. So maybe we right click and interact with it. Ooh. Look at that, it looks more like lava than water, doesn't it? Can we add more than one sugar to this potion? No, it's not consuming the item, but we can fill up all of these cauldrons with sugar. And if I scoop this out now, we've got, what do we have? No effects. Okay, 
So sugar doesn't do anything. Hmm. Next up, nether wart. Now we've got loads of this because we've been growing it in the nether. Let's see what happens when we mix it into our cauldron. Nothing. Not taking an item from the stack, so it's definitely doing nothing. Now that's interesting, isn't it? Because nether wart is a principal ingredient for potions in the future, but apparently not here. So I wonder why it was implemented in the first place. Who knows? Okay, for now, we'll just put this back and see if it has a use later on. Next up on the list, concentrated magma cube. Hmm. Now we don't actually have any of this at the moment and what it actually means is magma cream. So I'm gonna have to run to the nether. We're gonna have to kill a magma cube. After about an hour and a half of roaming the nether without any success, here's something that I knew and something that I learned. What I knew is that the spawning rate for magma cubes has been significantly nerfed in this version. So they're much harder to come by and I've had to roam around the nether quite a lot to find them. And the thing that I learned is that they don't drop magma cream in this version. In fact, they don't drop that until release version 1.1. So this whole side adventure into the nether has been a bit of a waste of time. Although I did get eight gas tears. Well, since this will really be our only opportunity to ever be able to explore this old school brewing system, and considering magma creams were actually added into the game, I think we can take a little bit of a liberty here. I'm going to add some magma creams into my inventory as if by magic, and I just hope you won't get too upset. I think that it's fair enough and we'll only use them for the purposes of this brewing system here. So let's see what they do. Now this little item here is actually quite reminiscent of a slime ball, isn't it? I mean, it does have the reddish, orangish magma colors here, but on the top there's this greenish tinge and I don't know anything green on the magma cube itself. So maybe they are a distant relative, who knows? But let's see what happens when we add it to the potion mix. Ooh, we get a nice deep dark purpley color. And now it's time to scoop it up and see what this actually gives us. We've got 12 of them, that's plenty of them. We've got fire resistance. That's our first official potion that actually does something. I think I've chosen the perfect location for this. We've got a nice lava lake over here and I've set a block on fire over here as well. The first observations I wanna make about this potion, however, are that this is a thick potion and there are different potion types, this one being thick, and I'm sure we'll uncover all of the others as we progress through some of the other ingredients. This one also has fire resistance and then it has three minutes. So this should be three minutes duration of fire resistance. So let's drink up and see what happens. All right, well, first things first, I don't notice anything, however, if we go back into the inventory, we can see that we now have these new effects showing up over here on the left hand side. This one's showing fire resistance with a countdown timer telling me how much time I have left. So let's put it to the test, shall we? Right, let's jump up on this fire block and see what happens. Huh. I'm completely impervious to fire. That is brilliant. That's not fire resistance. That's fire entirely repellent. And... Uh, I also seem to be on fire. Okay, well, that's a thing we have to be wary of when experimenting with this. All right, it's gone. So, oh, we have the reverse camera back. In other news, hello, it's me, Bugman CX, from the other perspective. Okay, well, we'll have to have a look at that later. I was not expecting that. All right, so we have lava here, and lava is kind of like fire. So let's see what happens if we jump in the lava. Let's do it in F5 mode. Whee! Wow. Okay. We are literally inside the lava, but we're taking damage. Why are we taking damage? Um, I'm a little bit lost here. Okay, okay. That looks like glass. Uh, can I find the surface? Yes, I found the surface. But look at that. Uh, we are basically impervious to lava as well. So this is a fantastic potion for the nether. Not sure why we took damage in there. I don't know, maybe it was fall damage or something. That's a little bit weird, but the fact that we can actually do, whoa, hi, oh, that's weird. Oh, the fact that we can actually do this and survive um, is really quite incredible. 
Just gotta say, I'm having so much fun with this. It's not very often that you get to experiment with something completely brand new. And because this functionality doesn't really exist in any version of the game other than this one, it's completely new to me. So this is like playing a whole new version of the game. Anyway, on to our next ingredient, ground up blaze. And what that actually means is if we take some blaze rods, we can convert the blaze rods into blaze powder. All right, let's take a few of these and see exactly what this looks like on the floor. Kind of a uh, little bit flamey, but also a little bit powdery. Yeah, it's it's convincing. Now let's see what happens when it goes into the cauldron. Oh, dark, very deep purple color there. Let's see exactly what this potion does. Let's scoop all of those up. This one is a thick potion with mining fatigue and weakness. Not a very useful potion, I would think. Why would I want to have mining fatigue and weakness? And in fact, when have you ever had mining fatigue in a potion? That's really interesting. Okay, time to do some experimenting with this one. Now, why would you want a potion with negative consequences? I don't want to have mining fatigue or weakness. Well, the idea is that you can combine ingredients in the cauldrons to brew up more unique potions, and we'll get on to testing that shortly. But for the time being, the negative effects are kind of a way of making this brewing system a bit more challenging. In fact, Jeb said, the initial idea of the negative buffs was simply to make it harder to create a clean potion. So we're definitely gonna to have to experiment with that, I think. But for now, let's find out what weakness and mining fatigue do exactly. Well, let's drink up. Okay, so I have two effects now, weakness and mining fatigue. Weakness effectively means that my attack damage against a mob is reduced, but I'm really more interested in this mining fatigue. And um, I love the effect symbol here, it's a spoon. <laughs> Whatever that means. Right, let's go and find something to mine. This block right here. Hmm. It didn't do anything. I still have mining fatigue, but no, I'm able to mine all of these blocks. Can someone please explain? I really don't understand. Now, I believe it's possible to clear potion effects by drinking milk. So even if we did have mining fatigue, and even if it did work, I should be able to get rid of it. And I'm just going to confirm that by drinking up some fire resistance here. So now we should have fire resistance and mining fatigue. And if I take this bucket of milk, drink it up, all of our effects are gone. So that's one way of getting rid of your negative buffs, but with the cost of getting rid of your positive buffs. Now I have been quite curious about this next one. It's the ghast tier. So if I take some of these and pop them into the cauldrons behind me, that is black, isn't it? That is just a dark black color. And uh, I don't have any bottles. Bottles acquired. Okay, let's scoop this up and see what it is. Mundane potion, instant health. That seems pretty cool, especially if you're in a tight spot. Looks like I'm gonna have to take some damage and test this one out. Ah, there's nothing like throwing yourself off of the cliff a few times to reduce your health down to half a heart. Okay, let's see exactly what this one does. Oh, not well, it is instant, but it's only three hearts of restoration. I thought it was gonna replenish me to full. This last ingredient is a bit of a curious one. Fermented spider eye. So first we need to find spider eye, then we need to ferment it. Okay, let's head up to the cave spider spawner up there and see if we can get what we need. I love these mob grinders, so useful. Well, we've got a little build up of our friendly little cave spiders here. So let's see if they drop anything new and I can just spam click away. Looks like we have a couple of new drops popping out onto the floor. I'll kill a few more and pick a few of these up and then we'll have a closer look at them. Well, that's enough, I think. We have collected 10 spider eyes. Look at this thing. Oh, it's got the eyeball and then a little nerve thing right here. Oh, it's gross. Okay, let's have a look at it on the floor. Ugh, ugh. Okay, so that is a brand new drop for the spiders. Both the spider and the cave spider will drop the spider eye. Um, I'm gonna eat it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so now you know what's giving you the damage. Not just their poisonous bite, but also their poisonous eye. 
In order to ferment a spider eye, we need to mix it with mushrooms and sugar. That should create a new fermented spider eye. But before we do that, I want to see what happens if we just pop a spider eye directly into the cauldron. Will it do anything? It, it will. It creates a kind of dark green potion thing. Okay, let's pop another one in this one. And then over here, I'll create a new fermented spider eye by combining spider eye with sugar and a mushroom gives us this fermented spider eye. Isn't that a lovely looking thing? Ugh. Let's see if, is this edible? I'm not hungry. I might have to try and eat one later on. Okay, let's pop this into the other two cauldrons and see what we get. A sort of purpley color. That looks pretty cool. Uh, I only made one, so this will have to do. I'll get some bottles and scoop these up and see exactly what we get. First, our regular spider eye. This gives us slowness, and this one is a milky potion. Four minutes of slowness. Okay, that's an interesting one. And our fermented spider eye, that gives us mining fatigue and poison. Okay, well, we don't want to go anywhere near either of those things. We've already experienced mining fatigue, and I think we all know what poison 2 does to us. All right, all right, let's do it. Ah, oh, yeah. Poison too. Oh, that's rough. That's really rough. I wasn't expecting to take damage so quickly. Am I going to survive this? I don't know if I'm going to survive this. Oh, okay. Poison just... Oh, oh, okay. That's right, because poison doesn't kill you. It only brings your hearts down to half, and then you slowly recover, but continue to take damage. So you definitely don't want to take damage from anything else while you're poisoned. Now that poison one was pretty rough. This one is also another negative potion. So there's quite a balance of negative and positive buffs in this potion system. This one is slowness and we get slowness for four minutes. I'm very curious to see what happens because as we run around like this, we're getting a reasonable speed like this. Now, if we take the slowness potion, oh, did you see the camera zoom in there? We've got slowness for four minutes and this feels very slow. I'm sprinting right now and I'm not making very much ground. Oh, I don't like this because I usually like to zip and zoom around the base. Oh, this is too slow. This feels a lot like back in the early days before sprinting was added and everything took so long. Oh, hi. Uh, hi hello. Um, okay, I, I better deal with that. Well, so far we've tested all of these ingredients separately, and now we know what all of these different ingredients will produce in terms of the different potions. But what happens if we combine things? And more effectively, what happens here with sugar? Because sugar doesn't actually have any effect on its own, and I'm keen to see what happens if we add it to an existing potion. So I'm going to head over here and let's create, for example, a fire resistance potion right here, and then add sugar. Ooh, look at that, it changed color. So if we take this one out of the cauldron now, we should have something a little different. Speed two and fire resistance. So that's a way of taking the sugar and actually make it effective by combining it with another potion. All right, I've got to try this one out. Let's drink up. Oh, the camera changed again because now we're in fast mode and this is just regular walking. So I can't wait to try sprinting. All right. Let's do it from this end to the other end in sprint mode. Oh, wow. Okay, this is super fast. And I'm loving it because I do love zipping and zooming. So I might have to take advantage of these as soon as we have the proper capabilities of making them. I also want to check and see what the icon looks like. It's a swifty cloud that you probably leave behind you as you go. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. Let's just try out another combination here. So another ghast here, and this time fermented spider eye. Wow, now that is a color. That looks pretty incredible. Let's see what we get out of this one. This has given us mining fatigue, instant health, blindness, and poison. This is a pretty horrible potion, <laughs> but I'm really keen to try it out. We've experienced all the other effects, so it really is only the blindness that I'm keen on trying. So let's swallow this. <coughs> And ooh, just ignoring the poison for a moment. I really can't see it all, can I? F5 mode? Nope, that doesn't fix anything. 
Blindness, uh, well at least I'm not going to fall to my death because at least I can see a few steps in front of me. But if I was in a deep dark cave and I had this effect, this wouldn't be pleasant. And blindness is represented by this big eyeball. I've combined a spider eye and a fermented spider eye to give us this deep red colour here, which I really quite like. And I have no idea what this potion's going to be. Let's have a little look and see. Slowness, hunger and poison. Well, oh, it's a harsh potion. I haven't seen a harsh potion before. That's pretty interesting. But what I wanted to check here was what happens when we add water with the cauldron halfway down, because I think it's possible for us to actually increase the amount of liquid in the cauldron and it's also changed the color. So that means that the potion combination is probably different. Let's have a look at what that's made us. Mining fatigue. So from hunger, slowness and poison too, to mining fatigue. But it does show that it is possible to manipulate the existing potion brewing even while you're partway through making whatever it is you're making. That opens up a lot of interesting combinations. Well, I don't know about you, but I have had so much fun exploring the old potion brewing system with the cauldrons, which never actually quite made it into the game properly. But did I miss anything? Did I overlook anything when it comes to combining ingredients or different potions to try? Let me know in the comments if I did, because I'd be interested in trying this out again. We'll be on beta 1.9 pre-release 2 for a little while yet, so we'll still have access to this cauldron-based brewing system if we need to revisit it. But for now, it's the end of today's episode, and so I want to say thank you for watching, and as always, an amazing special thank you to my wonderful patrons. You're all fantastic for supporting me. Thank you so so much. I will see you all in the next episode, and until then, this has been Bugman CX. You've been watching Minecraft The Journey. Oh, I shouldn't have drunk that.